Well, basically, the prime minister, through the whips, realised that he didn't really have the support on his own back benches to get it through. It was a real test of the prime minister's status and actually a reflection of the lack of trust that the prime minister has within his own party. So um, the whips were sent back and a compromise position has been put in where they will try to add an amendment to delay the inquiry. Oh, interesting. So, first of all, let's talk about what we've heard today in the House of Commons. What sort of arguments are being put up? Well, there's an argument that the chronology, we still have police investigations ongoing. We still have the official inquiry by Sue Gray. So the government is trying to make an argument that it would make sense to delay the parliamentary inquiry until the police and the independent inquiry are finished so that the parliamentarians have the full picture. Of course, the flip side on that is that everybody knows that Boris Johnson is really trying to kick this can as far away as possible. And this waiting till the other investigations are finished is an attempt to create space to allow the agenda to move on. Yes, and I mean, you know, he's not even in the country at the moment, so he's not even turning up for this rather political, uh, you know, crucial sort of examination of his behaviour. Is the timing interesting for him? Of course, he's been out front very strongly um, in terms of the invasion in Ukraine. Is he going to be able to distract the British people? Well, I mean, I think that's the, the, the key question. I mean, Boris Johnson, a few weeks ago, was really fighting for his political life and career. Uh, then we've had a couple of weeks where the agenda has moved on. What's really interesting is how much the prime minister being fined by the police, even though it was a relatively small amount of money. The principle behind that has really angered the British public and it's angered a lot of the Boris's own backbenchers. So... Whether he can really distract attention, whether the Ukraine or... I mean, we have a prime minister that is very keen on fleeing the country at rather <laughs> tricky times. Uh, so going to India is no surprise. Uh, what you see is an attempt to reframe the debate away from parties towards our prime minister as a statesman on the, on the international stage. Now, whether a prime minister that has built his career on being a joker, a celebrity and a rebel can pull that statesmanly like portrayal off, I think it's going to be difficult. Yeah, as you say, with mounting sort of dissent in his own ranks. Uh, Matthew, take us through, you know, knowingly misleading Parliament, the sort of bars that have to be uh, set. It can spend, spell the end of a political career. So what is your reading of this case? Well, absolutely. I mean, never before has British politics depended or been defined on one word, knowingly. The key question at the moment, Boris Johnson has apologised for misleading the House. The million dollar question is whether anybody can prove that he knowingly misled the House. Now, that is actually a really high bar to try and get over. What's interesting about the inquiry, if Boris Johnson is not able to control his backbenchers and a significant number go with the opposition parties to get an inquiry up and running, is that parliamentary inquiry will be able to access information, photographs, call witnesses to really open up the debate in a way the Prime Minister is not going to want to happen. At the very least, it will keep Partygate at the front of the political agenda when we have local elections coming up and we have a lot of backbenchers that are now starting to think about has Boris Johnson lost his X factor with the public? Because the next general election is starting to loom on the horizon. Yes, and their own political futures included with his. Um, look, let's look to the future of one of uh, Australia's own, Julian Assange, uh, a British court ruling that, well, approving the extradition of Julian Assange to the US to face uh, um, charges there. The minister now, Priti Patel, has the final say. What do you expect from this? Well, I mean... Priti Patel is herself a fairly controversial politician, um, has clearly just recently led the whole move for a new policy to send asylum seekers to Rwanda, of all places, who turn up on our coast. So uh, Priti Patel is a fairly hard line minister. She's not scared of making tricky decisions. And I would imagine that Julian Assange and his team 
are pretty worried right now. Yes. What other legal options are still open to them, though, if she just she does endorse this ruling? Well, um, to be honest, the team is running out of legal space in which to hide. There are some pretty minor legal arguments that weren't um, appealed from the first case, but really the, the, the bandwidth and options for the Assange team are really getting narrower and narrower. And if they are becoming reliant on someone like Priti Patel to make the decisions, then really it might be the end of the game. Yeah. Matthew, great to have you on. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.